what is the biggest challenge when you're trying to teach a computer, essentially a pile of metal and silicon, how to drive? Well, uh, the first level of uh, uh, challenge always comes from perception, essentially. Perception means how you see the world, how you understand the world, how you, you know, understand how others would move. So, um, to how to train a, your uh, computer or machine to never make mistakes, I would say, that is the biggest challenge. Um, and uh, then basically you have to understand the behavior of everybody around you. And as you know, we humans, we like to improvise. <laughs> we don't stick to the rules all the time. And how to make a computer, you know, work in a nicely way with that, without, uh, you know, making anything funny happen, it's also, I, I think, a big challenge. All right, now, how do you know? When, when a computer makes a mistake. For example, when I'm driving and I make a mistake, my girlfriend definitely lets me know. How do you know when computer screws up? Well, computers are not like humans, you know, they're more consistent. <laughs> so they're not meant to make a mistake. You know, if they make a mistake, I didn't do my job well. Well, that said, uh, we do have uh, uh, multiple sensors, essentially, especially for the forward area. Uh, have some level of redundancy to keep safety is very important. So we have plenty of redundancy in our sensor kind of suite to make sure nothing is being missed. And we also have the fallback mechanism. If you see something funny going on, let's say, well, the front, uh, the leader vehicle, right? Uh, speed jumped by, I would say, 10 kilometer per hour, which is not supposed to happen. Then a warning will be sent to the driver, say, hey, look out, something is, uh, you know, not right. All right, now you mentioned the sensors, right? So let's talk about that because there are some auto manufacturers that uh, said we don't want to use LiDARs. As a matter of fact, I know at least the one that says we give it to the Raiders either, right? Just relying on cameras only, vision only. Now, you guys are using both LiDARs, Raiders, in addition to the cameras. Tell me, why do you believe your way is better? All right. So actually, you know, I just touched upon that point in the previous question, right? Because redundancy is a very, very important to make sure safety is, uh, is, is maintained at a very high level. When you have uh, different sensors with different physical uh, characteristics to cover the same area, they can, uh, you know, kind of complete each other. Uh, like uh, radar, right? It, it's not a, you know, let's say, uh, for semantic uh, understanding of the world because it doesn't have a lot of pixels, it's, it's bad. But it does provide a very direct measurement of the speed because it's measuring frequency and Doppler. So that gives you a very accurate understanding of uh, that, uh, the, let's say, uh, 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 dimension of the world. And the same thing to the LiDAR. LiDAR doesn't provide the same amount of uh, pixels as compared to cameras as well, but LiDAR gives you a direct measurement of, of, of the 3D information depths, which is actually very, very useful, uh, especially in city driving. I, I guess we are going to touch upon the city driving as well next. Um, because city driving is so difficult, I mentioned the different uh, road participants, some of them very small. You want to keep a uh, constant tracking of these uh, objects all the time. And also, basically, uh, there are um, um, random obstacles intruding into the road all the time. And you need to, um, you know, being able to detect these, uh, let's say, static obstacles as well and avoid them. And the LiDAR is the one that it gives you this uh, three dimension, basically, what sometimes we call the drivable space all the time uh, without much effort. So it's also um, a measure of both redundancy uh, to keep safety and accuracy and accurate understanding of the world. Now, what happens when LiDAR, let's say, is saying one thing and the camera may see something different? Who wins that argument? Well, um, as I said, different sensors really have different physical characteristics. We have to trust the different sensors at, at their best. If, for example, if you want to tell the position of something, uh, you better trust LiDAR better. And the camera will give you a depth understanding as well. But uh, you, uh, you sometimes, uh, you know, using technical world, uh, word, we say that we boost their coherence, which means we trust them less. And for speed as well, uh, as I said, radar provide direct measure of, of speed. In matter of speed, then you better trust uh, radar more. This is the basics of uh, how we call it the sensor fusion, of how to use different sensors at their best. 
All right, well, that's very interesting. Okay, so now let's talk about, you know, you mentioned the uh, city and GP is coming pretty soon. Uh, and you mentioned it is very different than, than just highways. What is the biggest challenge there that you've seen so far? What is the biggest thing that you had to solve in order to make it work? Well, uh, road participants, as I mentioned, is, uh, is uh, I would say, the biggest challenge. In the city, basically, you have to constantly battle the, uh, you know, the pedestrians and uh, the electric bike. Uh, you're in the States, right? Yes. Yeah, you probably don't see that. At least I don't see that in the States. Because the buses, they don't stick to the rules all the time. They do this 45 degree cutting all the time across multiple lanes. How do you deal with this kind of random behaviors and random road participants in the city road? Um, it's, 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 it's very, very challenging, actually. So we have to use everything uh, we can uh, to make sure we have a constant understanding of the, uh, not only what, where they are, uh, the other road participants, but also their intention, and try to predict their next move so that we can make our move um, you know, the safest way uh, possible, and also um, keep the comfort level acceptable, at least to our customers, which is super hard. Well, it's very interesting that you think that buses is the biggest road challenge in China because here in America, it's the humans that's the biggest challenge. And yet, uh, humans are still, you know, very much uh, don't they, they don't trust the computers yet to, uh, you know, drive for them, even though, as I mentioned, they are not really that good at it themselves. What do you think has to happen for the uh, fallible humans to actually trust this technology? Well, um... I think the key thing is really to deliver a good enough technology to our customer hands so that they will start to use it. And uh, after that, hopefully they will never uh, stop using it. This is how it happened for Highway and GP. Uh, in the sense right now, uh, you know, uh, the uh, what do we call the mileage uh, penetration number, it's, a, uh, it's super high. Actually, uh, for every, uh, uh, let's say 10 miles, that can be driven um, with the highway NGP uh, in our customers. Our customers in average are driving seven miles of them. It doesn't uh, need the uh, driver to be so attentive anymore when uh, you are just uh, watching the machine doing its job. So this is really, really the key to uh, establish the foundation uh, be, um, of the trust between the technology and the people. Uh, essentially, you really need to deliver the technology at a high enough bar so that people feel, okay, this is something really, really useful. And that bar is super high. Um, and if you miss that bar, if you're making a few mistakes, let's say, I don't know, every 10 miles, then people will say, this is crap, I'm not gonna use it. Speaking of trust, uh, one, one thing that people don't trust computers very often with uh, and maybe rightfully so, is because they don't know where their data is going. And a lot of times it's, you know, they're very much concerned. Uh, what does Xpong do to, uh, uh, to pre pre preserve the customer data and make sure it's secure? All right, um, this is a great question. Actually, uh, uh, in China, the government has realized basically data security and the privacy uh, in particular uh, is super important as well when we roll out the uh, autonomous driving technology. There's, there are multiple regulations ongoing right now uh, to make sure basic things are done in the proper way. For example, starting from uh, later this year, for all our data, you know, uh, collect from our vehicle, it will, uh, we're gonna do basically a blur the faces, all the faces, uh, you know, we see. So, the, so from the image, you cannot tell. For all the data we put in our system, we, we will put, uh, you know, the highest security level you can imagine so that the people don't get to abuse it. And also basically we will, in terms of keeping privacy, uh, we will try to basically make all the data anonymous. Uh, so that they can be used to help our technology, but not uh, harm any privacy, uh, you know, of our customers. Let's talk about the fact that, you know, Axpong has been one of the very few uh, passenger vehicle manufacturers that has such advanced uh, self-driving features. Um, so wh what's the secret sauce? Why were you guys able to get this far ahead of most of the competition? 